We have been studying the end times and today I want to speak to you on what will happen to the Christians, those who are born again by the Spirit of God. Will they go through the terrible time of tribulation that is predicted in Revelation and in Daniel? Or will God keep us from the hour of temptation that shall come to try them that are on this planet? We can find that in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. And to, today I want to explain to you out of the word of God on what will happen to, believe, to the believer. For I believe the scriptures are very clear on this subject. And I want to ask the Lord that He will bless us today so that we can understand and be in agreement of how God will operate with the Christian when it comes to the time of tribulation. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we ask for your blessing today that you will give us great understanding of your word, Father, as we study it. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We know that the time is short and we, your children, Lord, we sometimes get anxious. But Lord, you have left us a blueprint where we can study. You say, O oh God, when these things take place those terrible things that will come upon this planet you are saying that we should not be anxious for you are in control and we ask you O god to bless us today as we study your scriptures we thank you for your grace in jesus blessed name amen we know that there's going to be a terrible time of tribulation i believe all bible scholars uh, agree on that but they don't all seem to agree on what will happen to the Christian once uh, these things begin to come to pass but I believe the Bible teaches that God will uh, take us out of here but because to try and keep us from the terrible Antichrist here on this earth will be impossible even though the Lord could do that but what we have here is we have on this planet a great amount of Christians they are intermingled with all the the peoples of the earth I know that in the days of Noah there was only eight and God could easily take them and put them into an ark and keep them I know that during the time when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, there were only three, and God could easily lead them out. But now there, is, there are millions of us who claim to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have a feeling God will do something drastic when it comes to protecting us this time when the terrible persecution will come upon a pl upon this planet the mystery of iniquity has to come to a conclusion but we the bride of christ will we see it or will we not see it we i believe will watch what happens from the portals of glory as those things transpire on this planet. I want to read to you out of Matthew chapter 24. Very clearly he indicates in verse 29 when he will come back the second time. It says immediately after the tribulation of these days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn they shall see the son of man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory so he is telling us here immediately after the tribulation he will come back to save his people from annihilation as we have studied before in the last few weeks but now he is telling us immediately after the tribulation his feet 
will come to sit down on the Mount of Olives. He, his feet will touch the Mount of Olives. And when we study what happened in Matthew chapter 24, in the first part of the chapter, the destruction of this planet will be so complete that the human race has almost exterminated itself. It says in one place, the Lord Jesus Christ says, if we do not come back, there shall no flesh be left. But something happens when you study in verse 36 of Matthew chapter 24. He says, but of that day and hour, no, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Up till verse 29, he is telling us exactly the time when he's going to come back, immediately after the tribulation. And when we study the book of Daniel, we know exactly when the tribulation will start, and we know exactly how long it will last. But here he says, immediately after the tribulation, he will come back. But somehow, in verse 36, he's telling us, No man knows the day nor the hour of that day. What day is he talking about? It says, But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I want you people to study your scripture on that. There is a different coming back of the Lord. It says, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What is he saying here? He's saying people will be going about their lifestyle. They'll be eating, drinking. They'll be raising families. There's going to be a business world. Things will go like they have, we have known them for the last 6,000 years. People will be going about their business. And then all of a sudden, something will happen. He is talking about Jesus coming back. It says, two shall be in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, the other left. What should therefore? For you know not what hour your Lord doth come. This is a far cry from, uh, from Matthew 24, verse 29, where it says immediately after the tribulation. Now he is switching to the time when things will go like they did, in, like they do in your everyday life then all of a sudden there's going to be a separation. People, two people will be working together. One will be taken, the other left. Two people will be sleeping in one bed during the night. One shall be taken, the other left. There is going to come a separation on this planet like the world has never seen before. I can imagine there's going to be grandchildren that are going to be taken away. There's going to be children that are going to be taken away forever separated from their parents. The grandparents shall be separated from the grandchildren. The Bible teaches that there is going to come upon this planet something like a snare. People will not expect it. But we as Christians, God is warning us, this is going to happen. Where do we stand on this subject? Are we getting ready with our families to be taken out of here, all of us together? Or are we going to be separated from one another? I remember watching tribal trails on TV. That is a, a ministry that is to the native people. And this native man said, before I was a Christian, I knew about the rapture. And I knew my wife was Christian. And I would stay away for hours at night 
afraid to fall asleep because I believed I would be able to hang on to her when she would she would disappear and he said I lost countless hours of sleep just because I was afraid the Lord would take my wife away whom I loved so much and then he found the Lord Jesus Christ and then he could sleep peacefully during the night because he knew when the rapture would take place then he would go with his wife I'm asking you today are you ready to go with your grandchildren are you ready to go with your spouse should the Lord come at this moment where do you stand with Jesus Jesus is calling you he is willing that none be left behind I want to show you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 it says behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed it says here we shall not all die you remember the Bible teaches it is appointed unto men wants to die but the Bible also teaches there is a generation that is not gonna die that generation shall be changed and here I'm talking about a generation of Christians they shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality there is no way we can enter into heaven with this mortal body of ours this mortal body will have to be changed just like the Lord Jesus when he was crucified he was put he was buried and on the third day he rose again with a new body that body could disappear that body could eat that body could vanish before somebody's eyes and there was nothing nobody could do about it you could touch it you could feel it the Jesus could eat but at also at the same time he could pass through walls this is exactly the body we are gonna get the minute we are going to be changed and that body is gonna last us throughout eternity it's gonna be perfect it's gonna be beautiful we will never feel any pain in that body we will be able to enjoy food we will be able to touch one another and rejoice in each other we will know each other by name we will know them instantly this is what's waiting for the believer an eternal time of bliss throughout eternity once that trumpet sound calls I'm asking you today where do you stand do you know in your heart you're ready with God I don't care how religious you are I don't care how good the things you have how how everything is right with you as far as your external being is concerned where are you in your heart do you know for sure when the trumpet sound you're gonna be changed do you know you're ready are you washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ are your sins forgiven have you accepted Jesus into your heart have you become born again for I believe every person has to go through that transaction you have to become born again by the Spirit of the Living God or else you will not be changed for only the spiritual man will hear the call of the trumpet so are you a spiritual man it's your your heart changed have you got the Spirit of Christ in you it's your choice come to Jesus today for you do not know what hour or what day he will call but the Bible teaches that he will call we are at that time when this great amazing thing can come to pass 
call on his name, for he is willing that none shall be lost. He loves you, that he gave, he loved you so much, that he gave his only son, that oh, if you believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Give your heart to Jesus today. He loves you. He died for you. He is calling to you. Answer him by repenting of your sin and accepting him into your heart. Until next time, the Lord richly bless you and bring you to himself. When we talk about the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the rapture, a lot of Christians, instead of being overjoyed by it, they seem to be anxious, almost as if they're not quite sure whether they're ready or not. It almost seems like there are Christians who would like to go through the tribulation so that they could be purified in one way or another. But the Bible teaches that our purification only comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no way that we in any way or form can be made more pure than the blood of Jesus Christ makes us. I want to read to you a few scriptures here. It says in Matthew chapter 7, it says verse 7, Ask it shall be given unto you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. So what I'm encouraging you today, if you are anxious, if you are a little afraid of the rapture, even though you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you could seek out the face of God and ask Him for that assurance that you are ready. Because I believe once the Lord Jesus gives you that revelation, then nothing can detour you from the joy that is in you. You will be joyful regardless what happens. But we a lot of times neglect that working out of our salvation. We seem to take for granted if the Bible says it and it's true. And then when we do uh, talk about those things, there is an anxiety that comes upon us. That is because we sometimes doubt our own belief. But I want to say to you, if you will seek the face of God, God will show you. If you want to find assurance of salvation, just dig for it and He will show you. I want to read to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12 the apostle paul makes an amazing statement he says all things are lawful unto me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but i will not be brought under the power of any the apostle paul was so sure of his salvation that he says he could do anything everything is lawful for him even though he could he will not be brought under the power of anything he knew that once the Lord Jesus Christ has saved his soul regardless what he fell into the Lord God will keep his soul throughout eternity and we can find that in the Old Testament King David knew the grace of God from a youth he knew the Lord Jesus Christ he knew the love of God and he sometimes fell in such dire sin his only problem was he lost his joy of salvation and he cried out unto God after committing adultery with Bathsheba he cried out restore unto me the joy of my salvation this is what the King David knew God had revealed it to him. I'm not condoning sin in any way here. What I'm saying here is you can find the joy of the Lord in your assurance of your salvation. And once you have it, you will be able to say like the Apostle Paul, nothing 
can hurt me anymore. I'm secure in my precious Lord Jesus. And then, once you know that, when we talk, when people will be talking about the rapture, you will be rejoicing, you will be full of joy, knowing that the blood of Jesus Christ had made you perfect and ready for His appearing. I want you to study that, to dig into that, because I know the feeling of that incredible tranquility and I want to give it to you if I could the only way I can give it to you is to tell you study seek and the Lord will give it to you he is the only one that passes out those incredible spiritual gifts and until next time the Lord richly bless you and make you a blessing amen